So it's now time to put the meat on the bones. So we have planned our critical essay. We have worked out the different techniques that we are going to uh, be analysing over the course of the essay. And we have written our wonderful and beautiful introduction. And now we need to develop our understanding of how to write and structure your main body paragraphs. So what you see on the screen in front of you isn't just a brilliant piece of artwork, ladies and gentlemen. It is the key ingredients that need to go into a main body paragraph. So regardless of the essay question, regardless of the technique that you are going to be writing about, these are the key ingredients. Now I know a lot of you will have had teachers previously who will have taught you how to pee. Point, evidence and explanation. Um, some of you have may have had teachers previously who, who taught you how to SQA. Statement, quotation, analysis. Uh, I'm not teaching you how to pee. And your parents should have done that a very long time ago. Um, what I am going to do uh, is not use an acronym. That's what I'm not going to do. So these are the steps that you're going to take to write a main body paragraph. So the first thing you do is to uh, write a topic sentence. That just basically means write a sentence which identifies the technique that you're going to be analysing. Because the topic of your sentence, or the topic of your paragraph, is that technique. Uh, so you need to write a topic sentence which identifies the technique that's being analysed uh, and then link it back to the task. So what that basically means is you're writing a sentence that says this paragraph is going to look at, so for example, the theme of rebellion. Or this uh, paragraph is going to explore the use of rhyme and form used in the poem. Now you're not going to write an unsophisticated sentence like the one I've just spoken. You're going to do it in a far more sophisticated manner. So how do you do that? Well, what you do is you link your technique back to the task. Shelley's poem contains a strong message which is clearly evidenced through his use of a second person narrative perspective. So you use the wording in the task to help you write that opening first sentence. And what that sentence is designed to do is two things. Tell me what technique you're writing about and make reference back to the task. Once you've done that, you then need to explain the effect of that particular technique. So what is the effect of using imagery? What is the effect of using a second person narration? What is the effect of having this particular use of rhyme or form? Okay, and that's perhaps a slightly more tricky bit. Once you've then done that, you're going to evidence from the poem what you have just said. So you're going to prove that what you've just said is correct and accurate in relation to this poem. And the evidence that I want you to use is in the form of a quotation. So you are going to lift part of the poem into your essay. Now, in terms of, um, so from a, a grammatical perspective, from a paragraphing perspective, if you use one or two words from the poem as your quotation, you can integrate that into your paragraph. So you just continue writing with it in inverted commas. If, however, you're using a whole line from the poem or a line and a half from the poem, that's considered to be a long quotation and you need to take a new paragraph for that. So when I model for you uh, my main body paragraph, I will demonstrate to you um, the difference between a long and a short quotation and how you actually need to set it out, lay it out. Now, the question that candidates always ask is, well, what, what, what defines a short quotation? What defines a long quotation? When does a short quotation become a long quotation? And it's all relative. If you're looking at something in poetry that is less than a line, significantly less than a line, then that, I would say, is a short quotation. If you're using a whole line or more, I would consider that to be a long quotation. So once you have evidence, the point that you had made earlier on in the paragraph, you then need to contextualise the quotation. Context is all. What that basically means is that you're going to explain what is going on at this particular point in the poem. Now, what you need to understand is that the person who is marking your critical essay might never, ever have read your text. So if you can imagine, a marker is going to mark 200 papers and there's going to be a huge spread of texts being used across those 200 papers. They may never have read your text. 
So you cannot assume that they understand the poem and they understand what's going on in the poem. So you have to speak to them as though they were a three-year-old child and explain to them what's going on at this particular point in the poem. At this point in the poem, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Once you've done that, then you then need to decide whether you want to analyse word choice, imagery, structure, or tone. And obviously it is the quotation that you're using that will help you decide which one of those features you're going to look at. Uh, and obviously the link that you're making back to the task as well. Once you have made that decision, then you analyse the word choice, imagery, structure, or the tone. Then you then need to link the effect. So we know that with the final step in analysing each of these, the final step for all of them is to explain the effect. What I'm saying to you is it's a little bit different here. Rather than just explaining the effect, I want you to explain the effect and link it back to the task. Okay? And obviously in this case, the task is a strong message. Now you're probably wondering what that wonderful piece of artwork is on the right hand side of the screen. This was my attempt, ladies and gentlemen, at creating a visual image that shows the circle of argument. I had problems getting arrows that go round a circle, so I had to improvise with wonky ones. So let me explain what I'm talking about. Very often when you um, write a critical essay, your marker will write in the feedback something along the lines of, you need to develop your line of argument. Your line of argument is unclear. You do not have a line of argument. And that's quite an abstract idea uh, for candidates. And what they're actually talking about is this here, that you have made a point in relation to the task, that you've talked about a technique, that you've evidenced it, that you contextualised it, that you then analysed your evidence and then you made that link back to the task. That, in essence, going from there to there to there to there to there to there is your line of argument. I don't think it is a line of argument. I think it's a circle. Because you start your analysis by making the link between the technique and the task. You then explain the effect of the technique, you evidence, quote it, contextualise it, analyse your quotation, and you come back at the end to link the effect back to the task. So for me, it's not so much a line of argument, it's actually more a circle of argument. Everything in this essay has to keep coming back to the task. Do not feel as though you are repeating yourself. This, you are producing an essay that is relevant to the task you have been given. That's one of the jobs you have to do. And the only way you can ensure that it is relevant is by keeping coming back to the task. Okay, so that's an important part of writing the main body paragraph. So what I'd like to do for you now is to model for you an example of a main body paragraph. Okay, so let's have a look to see what we've got. So um, obviously the first sentence is supposed to be my topic sentence. It should introduce the technique that I'm going to be writing about and it should also link that technique back to the task. So the sentence reads, Shelley's controversial poem, a song, uh, Men of England, utilises a second person narrative perspective in order to convey his strong message that the workers of England need to rebel. So you can see clearly the use of the word second person narration that identifies the technique that I'm going to be writing about. And the use of the phraseology, strong message, links it back to the task. So the next thing that I said that I needed to do was to explain the effect of that particular technique. So I need to answer the question, well, what is the effect of using a second person narration? And here is my response to that question. This functions to directly address his audience and make a personal and an individual appeal to each and every one, thus enhancing the persuasive nature of the poem. So that explains the effect of using that second person narration. So what I needed to do next was to evidence, and I have chosen to use a whole line from the poem for my evidence, and therefore it needs to have a little new paragraph all on its own. So forge arms in your defence. Full line requires a new paragraph. I then go on to start my contextualisation of that quotation and need to take, yet again, another new paragraph. So here's my contextualisation. 
Shelley directly addresses his audience with this call to arms. He recognises that peaceful protest will not ensure the changes they so desperately need and that force will need to be used. That's what's going on at that particular point in the poem. That is exactly what he's doing. I then need to decide what I'm going to analyse in terms of word choice, imagery, structure or tone. And for this particular quotation, I've gone with a feature of structure. So I have identified the feature of structure as a command, but I have also identified the use of the imperative clause as well. So I was showing off a bit there. The urgency of this command is reinforced with his use of an imperative clause. Shelley has deliberately manipulated the structure of this poem in order to enhance its persuasive nature. So, feature I'm, I'm analysing structure, command, imperative clause, and the effect is to make it more persuasive. I now need to link that analysis back to the original task. This further emphasises his commitment to a call for rebellion. And the key message that I had said in my essay that this poem conveys is a call for a rebellion. So that makes the final link back to the task. So when you're writing a paragraph on use of uh, the pattern of rhyme or the rhyme scheme used in a poem or the form that's used in a poem, the structure of that paragraph is slightly different. It's a manipulation of the structure that I gave you at the beginning of this session. Um, because clearly, in terms of your evidencing, when you're talking about the form of a poem, you're talking about the whole structure of the poem. So the final part of the process is to write our conclusion. Now, candidates very often um, say that the conclusion is the hardest paragraph to write, but uh, in actual fact, it shouldn't be. It should actually be the easiest paragraph to write, because what the conclusion does is it summarises all the main points that you have made over the course of your critical essay. That is the function of a conclusion in a critical essay. It has a summarising function. So there are only three key things that really I'm asking you to do in the writing of your conclusion. Firstly, summarise the singular main point made in each of your main body paragraphs. So go back read the main body paragraph, check it, edit it, improve it, work out the main point that you've made and use that information to write your conclusion. Read your next main body paragraph, check it, edit it, improve it. Use that information to write the next point in your conclusion. Read your third main body paragraph, check it, edit it, improve it. Use that information to write another sentence for your conclusion. And all the while in writing those sentences, try as much as possible to keep linking it, each of those statements, back to the task. And then finally, and this really is just the cherry on the cake, is to finish with an evaluation. So if we look at the sentence that I've constructed, it says, Shelley's highly persuasive and controversial poem has a clear and strong message of rebellion. So I asked you to write an evaluative statement that links it back to the task. The use of the phrase highly persuasive evaluates the poem. It says the poem does what it's supposed to do, it persuades the people. The use of the word controversial also evaluates the poem in that it makes reference to the message and says this message is not going to be liked by everybody, um, therefore it's a controversial poem. The fact that I refer to the message as both being clear and strong also evaluates... So there is one, two, three, four occasions in that sentence in which I evaluate the poem and link it back to the task. That's the cherry on the cake. There's no necessity to have to do that, but it's, it's always nice to try and feel that you have actually finished your essay and very often after you've summarised each of the main points that you've made, you're left feeling that it's not quite finished off, that the bow hasn't quite been tied. And this would be my suggestion to you of how you tie that bow um, by creating an evaluative statement that links back to the task.